In this video, I'll introduce you to Rails Composer. Hi, this is Asia G from the Full Stack Videos channel. Rails Composer is the fastest way to generate Rails starter applications. Rails Composer is from the Rails Apps open source project, which was started by Daniel Kehoe, the author of the book Learn Ruby on Rails. With the ordinary Rails new command, Rails generates a simple starter application, which is a template for further customization. Rails Composer goes far beyond that, generating your choice of a dozen different starter applications, which have all the gems and features you might need to get started building a sophisticated Rails application. It isn't really a tool for beginners, since you need to be able to understand what all the code can do. But the project offers tutorials for each of the starter applications, so there's no mystery code. And purchasing the tutorial supports further development of the example applications. I'll show you how to use Rails Composer. You'll need to have Rails installed. You can open a terminal window and type Rails space minus V to check the Rails version and make sure it is installed. I'm sure you've previously built Rails applications with the Rails new command. To use Rails Composer, you use the same command but you add an argument. Let's build an application named My App. Type Rails new My App followed by minus M and a long URL. You can copy the URL from the screen here or get it from the Rails Composer website. The minus M option lets you add an application template to the generator that builds a Rails starter application. In this case, the application template is hosted remotely on the GitHub site in the Rails apps repository. We're saying, build a new Rails application by going to GitHub and using the template found at the URL. Let's see what happens. Rails Composer does much more than just copying or cloning an existing project. The Rails Composer tool gives you a series of prompts in the console to customize your new application. Take a look at the first prompt. Just a word of warning, Rails Composer is an evolving project, so the prompts may have changed by the time you view this. The first prompt gives you a choice of building an example application, some contributed applications, or a custom application. The custom application is for experienced Rails developers, so we'll just build one of the example applications. Enter 1 to build a Rails Apps example application. You'll see a list of available starter applications. Let's try number 2, a Rails Bootstrap application. Bootstrap is a popular front-end framework that provides integrated library of CSS, JavaScript, and a page layout grid that makes it easier to put together web pages than just writing HTML and CSS from scratch. Enter 2 for the Rails Bootstrap example application and you'll see another prompt. Here's your chance to enter your email address for the project mailing list. It's optional, but I suggest you enter your email address to get news about Rails Composer. It's a good way to learn about developments with the Rails Apps project and you won't get spammed. Enter your email address or just hit return and you'll see a prompt to choose a web server for development. Just choose one, the default Puma web server. At the next prompt, choose one to use the same Puma web server for production. Next, you choose the database you'll use. For now, we'll choose the built-in SQLite database that comes pre-installed on Mac or Linux. For a big project, most Rails developers use PostgreSQL. Enter one for SQLite. One of the great things about Rails Composer is it shows you the typical choices that experienced Rails developers make when setting up a new application. There are several alternative template markup languages that experienced Rails developers use for their web pages. Some developers like the Haml language. It's not the default ERB syntax that most tutorials show. It's more concise but pickier about indentation. Some developers choose Slim to mark up their view templates because it is even more concise than Haml. We'll choose ERB, the standard template syntax for view files. Choose one for ERB. As you know, experienced Rails developers include automated testing from the start with any Rails project. The default is named Minitest, but many developers like to set up the RSpec gem for testing. 
we'll skip testing for example application, so enter 1 for none. You'll begin to see why Rails Composer is such a time saver. There are a lot of gems that developers add to a starter application. Most applications need forms, and the simple form gem makes it easier to build forms, so we'll add it by entering 2 for simple form. Rails Composer is smart enough to install the gem and set it up properly to use the Bootstrap front-end framework. Now you'll see the choices Rails Composer gives you for your page layouts. It gives you a choice of two dozen pre-built themes from the Start Bootstrap project. These are free page layout templates that give you a choice of a variety of typical websites like a blog, a photo gallery, or a simple business website. I'll include a link to the Start Bootstrap site in the resources section for this video, and you can visit the site and see which page layouts you can select. For now, we'll pick number 14, Modern Business, because it is quite extensive with several pre-built pages. Enter 14 for the Modern Business theme. The choices continue. Next, Rails Composer asks how you want to handle analytics for tracking visitors. You can choose Google Analytics here, or you can choose Segment, which is a service that collects data for many different analytics services. I'll enter one to select None. Now Rails Composer asks if you want to prepare your application for deployment. It will set up your application with gems and configuration for Heroku, the popular hosting platform, or set up Capistrano, which is a deployment tool. I'll enter two for Heroku. Now Rails Composer asks some configuration questions. First, it asks if you want to disable Rails Turbo Links. Rails Turbo Links is a feature that makes clicking between web pages faster for a visitor. But Rails Turbo Links makes development with JavaScript complicated, so often developers will remove Turbo Links and add it later. I'll enter Y to say yes and disable Turbo Links. Rails Composer takes care of several little details you might overlook in setting up a new application. It asks if you want to set a robots.txt file so your site won't appear in Google search results. That might be important if your site is under development but live on the web. I'll enter Y to say yes. Rails Composer will create a GitHub repository for your project if you want. It will need GitHub credentials to do so so I'll skip it by entering N for no. That's all the prompts you get from Rails Composer for the Rails Bootstrap example application. It takes a few minutes for Rails Composer to generate the application. It sets up Git for version control, it installs gems, it sets up default layout files, it builds pages so you have a complete application ready for customization. I'll show you what the generated application looks like. I'll cd into the project folder and run Rails server. Here's what we see in the web browser. There is a full featured homepage with a JavaScript carousel for sliding images. You can see you just need to edit the homepage file to set up a site for a typical business. There's an about page ready to be edited. There's a services page. There is a contact page. There are several layouts for portfolio or gallery pages. There are several layouts you can use for a blog. There are several additional page layouts for an FAQ and for a pricing table. Keep in mind it's a fully functioning Rails application. It can be a lot of work to integrate a bootstrap theme with a Rails application, but with Rails Composer, it's all set up for you in a few minutes. I hope this gives you an idea of what Rails Composer can do. We built a simple starter application that integrates Rails with bootstrap and a number of bootstrap themes. There are other Rails Composer example applications that add authentication with device and omni-auth, authorization with roles, signing up for a mailing list, even integration with Stripe for credit card payments. If you're a subscriber, I'd like to say I appreciate your support for the project. To get more videos like this and learn about our project, send me an email. The address is 
more at fullstackvideos.com.